Hello, it's Nikki and welcome back to my channel. If you're not subscribed, please do so. There's loads of great stuff coming your way. Today is a slightly different video. Um, I was inspired to create this from a two-part podcast episode that I heard, hosted on Billion Dollar Creator by Nathan Barry when he interviewed John Yushai. So the first episode of that is is a live audience with John. I'm going to call him John, like we're friends, um, talking about his expertise of working at YouTube and Instagram and then becoming a creator. And that was with a live audience, which is always really great. There's always a great vibrancy in the room and that will kind of lead me on to something else in a moment. And the second part was then putting together an offer that um, had been in demand in the room. So essentially, through the conversation of this Q&A, people were asking if John did this kind of service. And it was really fascinating. I got loads from it. And I'm going to share with you seven things that I um, really have taken away and thought about. And this is going to be perfect for you if you are going into the last part of the year thinking, right, I wanna make some serious, excellent, exciting money, and I also want to do it in a way that feels really good. So if you haven't listened to the episodes, I will link them down below, do check them out. It will give a little bit more context, but you can go ahead and listen to them. I don't need to give you all of the details, but I will give you my takeaways. The first takeaway was this whole opportunity of a brand new package came from real life conversation. If you see this conversation on in, on the internet, on YouTube, I listened to it on the podcast, but I've gone back and looked at it on YouTube. They are so relaxed. It feels like you're having a cup of coffee with somebody. There's no hard sell. There's no, right, I'm now doing business and this is how we are going to do this. It's about talking around the topic, being passionate about it, finding solutions, talking about things that happen or that are difficult or challenging or how you overcame them. There is so much power in conversation. So if you are not showing up in terms of your content in a way where people see the real you, it's now time to do that. That's why so much of my work comes from so many different places and spaces. And it doesn't necessarily come from when I'm showing up, sharing a video on my social media. It can be through a conversation. People need to feel that they know, like, and trust you, that they feel safe to make a purchase from you, and they want to see your personality. They want to get a real sense of who you are. The second thing was to get in front of an audience that gets you and gets what you're all about. I think so often we're trying to please everybody. We're trying to cast the net too far. And instead, what we need to do is be in conversation with those people who get it, who, for example, are in the online space, are a freelancer, are a portfolio career, um, are somebody who wants to grow their social media, whatever it might be. And this was so interesting to me because somebody asked if he did this particular kind of thing. And a trait that is not solely dedicated to women, but I have worked with a lot of women around pricing and packaging. One of the main things that people will say is, will people pay for this though? How will I know if I'm too expensive? Is this okay? We're looking for that permission. And I will always say, find out, ask people get into conversation with people. That's the way that you learn. Because otherwise, when you just allow it to fester in your head, you go round and round and round, and you don't have a solution because you're just operating within yourself. And so breaking out that bubble and being in conversation, really listening to what people want, what they're struggling with, what's going on, is so, so important. Wherever you can, get into conversation. Number three, in part two of this series, they map out the particular options 
or potential options for this offering or service. So it happened in the q and I think he got nine inquiries after this. So then they essentially had a whiteboard and they were hashing it out like, okay, well, what, what will this look like? What, what, what could this be? And they were using very um, casual open language here, like what could it be? What if or how about? And that is such a great mode to be in when you're designing. If you get fixated on, well, it's got to be this, or I'm not even going to put it down until it's perfect, get it down anyway. Get all of the ideas out onto a piece of paper or whiteboard or however you like to document it, and then see what you've got. And then look at the common threads. I think so often it's that case of trying to write the perfect paragraph. I always say that when I'm helping clients with about pages, get all of it out, share your life story, your medical history, however you like to do it and work with that and then trim it down rather than saying, okay, I've got 35 words and I've got to nail my life and business and who I am. That is so much harder. Instead, go the opposite way. And again, when you are mapping out a new product, a new service, and we do this in Create Your Income Pie if you want to come and join us, it is a great way of operating because it allows you to bring in imperfect ideas, bring in little seedlings of possibility. When you've got those, you've got something to work with. Number four, um, there was no... And we're talking big numbers here. You can listen to the numbers on the podcast. The business model that they came up with was significant money. Let's just say that. Um, Significant money. A, A really great lifestyle. I live in London, one of the most expensive cities in the world. Um, They're in America. And I I feel like wherever you might be, this business model that they created would allow you to have a a really great life, a, a life with options, let's say. And yet, even though those numbers were big numbers by lots of people's terms, at no point were they getting stuck in that, but who am I to charge that? Like, who? but is that a... They weren't doing any of that money mindset stuff that I hear all the time. And I don't know them personally, but here's what I can say. Anytime either of them sort of deviated from anything other from what they were about to deliver, they they got rid of it. And this is a, a lesson in niching an ideal client, essentially. We can live in that imposter syndrome. I'm not good enough. I've only just started. I've never had a seven-figure business, so can I do that X, Y, and Z? Instead of feeling like you have to be all the things to all of the people, focus on what it is that you can do and really, really narrow it down. Not only will that boost your confidence because you'll be in that place where it's like, okay, I I feel really good about this. This feels like an easy sell. But also it will make more sense to your client and your customers who are looking for a specific thing. Number five, they were talking a lot about their circumstances and their personality and building a business model that works within that. And I think that it can be too tempting to copy somebody else's model or to chase the money or to think, well, I'll do all of this hectic stuff for the next 10 years, and then hopefully on year 11, uh, like good stuff will happen. I don't know if his baby is here or on the way. Anyway, he's, he's in that new dad to be or is situation. And so having that flexibility, having um, income, having regular cash flow, all of these things, was very important to him. And being focused on tweaking this business model so it suited all of his requirements was incredibly powerful to watch. 
And I think sometimes we can get so trend led, like, oh, well, everybody's doing memberships, or I knew somebody who was doing this and they made a lot of money, so maybe I should do that as well. Not the case. If you can lean in much more to what works for you, you're more likely A, to do it, and to B, deliver that excellence that you want. Number six, they looked at how they were going to execute the deliverables and exactly what they were. Again, it can be too easy to promise everything, to do all of the things and make it over complicated. And I think we went through a stage of um, exceeding expectations when people would give bonuses and you're gonna give the, get this and you can come on a retreat and we've got 50 hours of videos and we've got all of these things. The busier I get and the more advanced I become in my business journey, if somebody can show me how to do something in an hour rather than 50 hours, that is much more appealing to me. Because how often have you gone through a course or a book or something and you think, when am I going to get to the good stuff? And that's really helped me become a course creator in my own right of making sure that after every single module, however small, you are a lot further on. There's no kind of filler like, let's get to know each other for the first four modules and then we'll get to the good stuff. Pe people don't need to. Like they, they want the result and quickly. So can you provide it? Seven, the last one. They live play with the numbers. It could be this, if you did it at this price and sell it at this, this is what you would make per month. This is what the year long commitment would look like. This is what the monthly commitment would look like. Um, if we wanted to have a fast track version, this is how we could increase the bottom line. Really, really fascinating. Again, this totally fits in terms of the way that I do things, especially with clients as well. I know there, there are these marketing terms of saying, well, if it's this kind of product, it needs to be this kind of price or add a seven or a nine onto it because that's how people are going to convert. Yes, maybe uh, that is a key part of it, but it's not all of it. And playing around and really getting to a stage where those prices land with you, that you can embody them, that they feel really great, is part of the selling process. And I say this because most people concentrate on the other things. How can I make it the most cheap? Uh, what do I need to do? Uh, what do people recommend? And if you are the person who is selling it and saying, this is what it costs, this is what it involves. This is how you pay me. You've got to get into the emotions and the embodiment side. Otherwise, um, otherwise, it's only half a job. And you will see where your money blocks are. You will feel where there's uncertainty. And also, so will your clients. I hope that's been useful. If you want to find out more out about how to price and package your services, um, come over to Create Your Income Pie. Um, I've got lots of goodies in the description box for you. Or equally, if you just want to talk something through, have a look at my strategy sessions, my work with me page. Um, lots of good stuff in there. Uh, thanks for listening. Nathan, John, if you watch this, thank you so much. I was really inspired by these episodes and I hope it's been useful for you too. Lots of love and I'll see you next time. Bye.